I love democracy. I love the Republic. The main thing is to protect these characters, make sure that they still continue to, to live in the way that you created them, and that the universe of Star Wars continues to grow. rationalizations that the black pill blobs and the black pills have and the shills have is that Disney invested so much money into the sequel trilogy they'll never erase it. Well, that's not how it works, okay? And it works, in fact, in the opposite direction. If you invest a bunch of money into something and you lose that money, you don't invest any more of your money into that because it's a pit. It's a black hole of despair. You either sell that asset or you fix what's broken. You change it. And I know it's difficult for some people who aren't knowledgeable on these things, but here's something that Beth Dutton says to John Dutton in Yellowstone. People don't sell businesses that make money, right? They sell the losers. Now, I'm not implying that Lucasfilm is for sale, even though Bob Iger himself has stated all options are on the table for everything at Disney. I'm also not saying uh, he wouldn't sell it. He wouldn't sell it, okay? Because... Lucasfilm has not made Disney any money with the sequel trilogy. Mandalorian made money. Okay. Keeping Kathleen Kennedy around for as long as they have has lost money. Even the goodwill the Mandalorian created with the, the, the arrival of Luke Skywalker, uh, th th it ended up not doing well because of her conniving and backstabbing and undermining everything. So let's go to see exactly what Disney uh, put into these movies. So to, this is the money that The Force Awakens made. Okay. This is how much it costs. So this is what it cost to make, $306 million. Domestic was uh, almost a billion. A domestic box office, box office was two billion. Uh, Star Wars uh, Last Jedi cost 262 million. And box office went down by at least, I'd say a third, $620 million. And then 101 billion, $331 million. Okay, so this is uh, The Last Jedi's, roughly the DVDs, etc. Uh, sales. Here we are, The Rise of, of Dipshit. Now, this is funny. This is what they say it costs to make. It costs a lot more because of the reshoots. And again, box office went down literally by half from The Force Awakens, over half. Okay, Solo, A Star Wars Story. Uh, they, they, this is how much they said it cost to make. Probably cost $400 million to make. This is how much it, it got in domestic box office, international box office. It lost about $250 million. Okay, this is money that Disney can't get back. Okay, so I have to ask all of you, why, when you're looking at this, would Disney keep something that they can't use to make money? Okay, they're not making any quant on these. 
I'm sure if you looked at the uh, streaming numbers for all Star Wars assets, I, I would bet the prequels and, and the OT are probably tied neck and neck. And the reason is that's where Star Wars lives with The Mandalorian, the first two seasons. Uh, Ahsoka is not doing as well as it should, but I blame Black Pill YouTubers. Uh, they've, they've, they've thrown in their lot with Kathleen Kennedy, whether they know it or not. They're doing her job for her, but that's a different video. So, but when I hear those people talk about money that was invested, uh, yeah, they're not going to give it back. That's money they lost. So why would they keep an asset around? And I'm not talking about Lucasfilm. This part of Lucasfilm, the sequel trilogy, Solo, The Stoned Republic, etc. Why would they keep it? Okay, why would they keep it around? But let's go further. This is, these are the numbers for how much You're actually Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny to you cost picture? to make. Uh, with three sheets, Bring maybe up to $500 million. Dollars. This is what it made. Domestic box office, international box office. It lost probably as much as so many Star Wars stories. Crooked word. And of course, because Your it's not out on digital a wine or Blu-ray, uh, they don't have those. I've never had an agent. It's not like um, she worships the devil. Well, numbers she doesn't have to, he worships her. Out. But again, this is the problem with Kennedy being at Lucasfilm and Disney investing in anything that she okays. They are losing that investment. That money is gone. Okay, let me put it to you in a different way. You go to a horse, an auction at the, race, at the racetrack for a horse. In fact, this colt is by Curlin, and he uh, went to Zayden Racing for over $5 million. That's an investment. They bought him for his pedigree. He looks like a good horse to me. I don't know. But when you put that much money into anything, especially a movie or a young horse, he's a year old, has never been to the racetrack yet. He hasn't been broken at all. Um, you put that much money in something untested, you're probably going to lose that money. It'll never come back. Here's the Star Wars Hotel. They're closing it this coming month. It's over. An investment of upwards of $2 billion that is not, they can't get back. Why are they closing it? Because they can't get it back. Okay, they're moving on to something else. That works. Okay. Now you're seeing sequel trilogy characters like Ray and Kyle Ron replaced by Mandalorian and Grogu, Boba Fett, Ahsoka. Okay. And you'll see more. Probably prequel, tr uh, prequel trilogy characters may start showing up. Yoda um, and maybe uh, original trilogy characters. Um, that's where you sell things, okay? It's about, but when you're talking about investing, and here we go with the rational, rationalizing again. Disney invested too much in Star Wars and the sequels to erase them. They lost so much money in the sequels because they invested that money into something that, wasn't tried, didn't work on paper, and didn't work in reality, okay? That's the problem with the, rational, with the rationalizing of, of, of basically saying the reason why we'll never see the sequels go away is because they invested too much money. 
that is absolutely ignorant on money. Again, Beth says to John Dutton, Beth Dutton says to John, companies don't sell the assets that make money. They sell the losers. Companies don't continue on with assets that lose them money. And is that Lucasfilm? It could be. I'm not saying that they're going to sell Lucasfilm, but I'm also not saying that they won't sell Lucasfilm, but they will not continue with Ray and Kyle Ron. And I mean, look, the High Republic, my mother-in-law's first novel, she published herself, sold more books than uh, Claudia Gray's first High Republic novel. Okay, Tr true story. Okay, so when you're thinking about it, why would Disney not change from the sequel trilogy to something else? Why would they not do the right thing and stop it? Remove the sequel trilogy from the parks and from the Star Wars timeline. Okay, because it, it, it's, it's an anchor that's pulling the entire franchise down. Okay, you don't put $10 billion or so, invest it in parks and in films and in buying a company to lose that money. And I don't care if the shills try to say that, oh, Lucasfilm uh, broke even. No, they didn't. They quote net bo uh, gross box office. They do not quote net box office. Okay, they do not know really how much money was actually invested in the parks and in the hotel, which is closing. I estimate it to be $10 billion or more that Disney can't get back because the, of the poor decision-making by Kathy Kennedy, the fact that the sequel trilogy is repulsive to fans with money, they're not going to buy it. And again... It sucks so bad, it's pulling everything else down with it. Mandalorian, Ahsoka. Um, and it's giving black pills out there, you know, you know who you are, a voice and a narrative that they shouldn't have. Okay, so why would you keep investing in something or keep it around if it's not good for the company to go on with it, even if it's dormant sitting off in the corner. Okay, I'm explaining to you why when I say they have to erase it because they lost money on it. You guys talk about invest, invested money. They made no money on it. That's the problem. Okay, again, it's the analogy of buying a yearling thoroughbred for five and a half million dollars and the horse turning out to be a bum, okay? That's what Bob Iger did when he bought Lucasfilm and allowed Kathleen Kennedy to do what she wanted with the sequel trilogy. And he decided after The Force Awakens that she knew what she was doing. And now we know he realized probably in 2018 that she knew fucking nothing, okay? She knew fucking nothing, okay? And he stuck with an investment that could have had he listened to George Lucas and done what George wanted him to do, the, an investment that could have made him mil, billions and billions of dollars, okay? That's the difference, okay? So does he sell Lucasfilm? Like you said, anything's on the table. Does he keep it? Again, with the restructuring going on, I would say it's more than 50-50 that he'll keep it. But considering that we have uh, uh, Prince Fahad's name floating around in the background with the rumor going on in, in Lucasfilm office that uh, an investment group is interested in buying Lucasfilm, I don't know, okay? Um, we have to see. But even the price that was quoted, $8 billion, is not 
going to get the company to break even because of the money that Disney invested that they can't get back because of the sequel trilogy. If they erase it and tell people we're going off in a different timeline, the sequel trilogy is in its own pocket universe, people will probably think, okay, fine, and come back. Okay, now, the black pills who've made a living off of hate, hating everything won't come back, but they'll also be starved of cash, okay? You take away the narrative from them by doing that. But as far as they invested that much money, therefore it stays, no, they lost that much money because you're not looking at it the way I do, and I'm an investor. I'm a Disney. Uh, I have stock in Disney, okay? And that money is my money that they invested. Not theirs, mine, okay? This is Steph signing up off I'll see you around the galaxy.